Welcome to The Funnel. My name is John Shea, and I'm president of Alignment Group. This is episode number 238 of The Funnel. Effective sales managers know who they are. Before we begin, I want to tell you to head on over to alignment-group.com, subscribe, and receive the show notes. We send it out weekly on Thursday mornings, 9 a.m. Eastern Time, and it includes the previous week's published content. That's the podcast and the blog. Today's agenda, who are you? The good, the bad, and the ugly? Why is this important? And relieve the burden. So let's start with who you are. Oftentimes managers be sort of put this vibe out there on who they are as self-assured, are they confident? Do they project that when they speak to their salespeople or even their bosses? Are they that person that is together? You know, they show up on time. They got the Starbucks cooking and, and the, you know, everybody walks in with the Starbucks cup and looking good and refreshed and ready for the day and just has that vibe about him or her, Right. The truth is that we all have some anxiety. We all have some self-doubt that lives inside of us. We're not immune to that. If you are, I think there's, there's, if you are, if you don't have that, then there's something wrong there. Sometimes it takes us back to our grade school moments. You know, those moments in time when things happen to us that, stay with us the rest of our lives. Some people are bullied. Some are made fun of. Maybe it's their glasses or the way they look, how tall, short they are. Whatever it is, those moments create some anxiety within us. Do you hide those vulnerabilities about yourself? Those things that you don't want people to know. That exposure that might make you feel very uncomfortable. Think about that. And you're going to say, well, why is this important to managing? What does it mean when you say, who are you? Well, first of all, you have to be comfortable, right? <laughs> I was going to say comfortable in your own skin. There's somebody I know that uses that, like overuses that phrase. But it's true. You have to be comfortable with yourself. To be a good manager you do have to have some confidence. You have to be together. But you can't put out that facade daily, weekly, and monthly. So I put it like this, and, and I had a, a, a guy who I worked with years ago at my company, he was a consultant, and he did some work with us and trained us on a number of different things. But he talked about the bucket being full, and that's your energy level. You think about the things you like to do the most. You have a tremendous amount of energy. You love it. It's it's just that the, the minutes go by. The hours feel like minutes. The days feel like hours when you're doing something you love. Whatever it is, maybe you're camping or hiking or bike riding or surfing, whatever it is that you like to do, it just seems to go by so fast. Well, time doesn't change. There's still 24 hours in a day. Now, think about the thing you hate to do the most. For me, it's sitting still. In any kind of event, <clears throat> I have to work very hard at it to pay attention, right? And it just seems to drag on forever. And when it's finally over, you're exhausted, right? That's because it's taking every bit of energy you have inside of you to present the facade that you're focused, paying attention, and interested. And you don't just get up and walk out or start playing with your phone or listening to music or talking to somebody else. You focus, you pay attention, you smile, you shake your head while they're talking. Maybe you're in a presentation or something. I don't know. But it takes all your energy to stay in that moment. That's the facade. Are you doing that as a manager? Have you created a, a persona that's not you? That's really hard to do day in and day out. And to be a good manager, you need to get past that. 
So let's talk about the good, the bad, and the ugly. The first thing you need to do is accept yourself for who you are, not only as a salesperson and a sales manager, but as a general person. Are you similar in work as you are at home? I'm a fairly happy guy. Sometimes my kids in the morning ask me to stop being myself because I'm, I'm the same in the morning as I am at night. I'm recording this late at night. And it's the same. I could record it at 5 o'clock in the morning and it'd be the same vibe. Right? So I'm the same in, in many ways in the business world than I am in my personal world. You have separate lives and I understand that. You have your personal life and your business life and you try not to mix it up too much. That's not what I'm talking about. I'm talking about are you the similar person when you walk in the front door of your house as you are when you walk in the front door of your business. So accept yourself, and that means facing your own faults. What do I mean by facing your, your, your own faults? Well, I'll give you an example. I'll tell you about myself. There's a couple of things that I have to accept about myself. One, I have severe dyslexia. <laughs> so... Um, I have a problem with that. I can talk all day, as most of you who listen to the podcast know. But you ask me to sit down and write something, it takes forever. So I have to work through that. It's difficult for me to write because of the dyslexia. I faced tremendous hurdles in our education system. Because it's not built for people like me, or it wasn't back then. My third grade teacher locked me in in the closet because she thought I was just being rude because I couldn't read. Now the closet, I, I don't want you to think it's a really small closet. In our school, we had this cloak room. It's called a cloak room. It had a door on either end, and it had hooks along both sides of the wall, and you could hang your jacket, your bag, and your lunch in there. That's where she would make me sit. So I used to eat people's lunches in there. But it made you feel it made me feel pretty bad about myself and until my father went in there and threatened to beat up her husband. Can't do that today. But to his credit, he took me and had me tested and we found out the problem. It didn't really help in school because they had no mechanism for helping me back then. They do today. But it has affected me in many, many ways. Okay? But I face that fault. I don't hide it from people anymore. I used to hide it. When I make a mistake, I just look at people and say, I have dyslexia. Then do silly things like that because I don't see the world the way you see it. So sometimes I make those mistakes. I'm very open about it. I'm very open about the fact that sometimes I have a short temper. I have to apologize and say, I'm sorry I I snapped at you. Come on back in. I had something on my mind. I shouldn't have spoken to you that way. Okay? And I let people know that. It's not an excuse. I don't use it as an excuse. I apologize for it. I don't use my dyslexia as as an excuse. I actually feel like I have some additional creative powers within me that help me solve problems because I've, I've been forced to look at the world differently than everybody else. I've been forced to manage my issues and problems differently. The math that I do in my head is completely off target for most people. So that's accepting yourself and accepting your faults. I got to let people know that this is a problem that I have, especially my team. When I'm managing managers, hey, this is an issue that I have. I don't sit down and tell them all my problems, but I let them know the things that could affect me and affect the work, and it's not a big deal. I own the power. Okay, what I mean by that is empowerment, right? You don't want to give that up, that vulnerability up. Somebody could find out that you have dyslexia, and then it's a problem. I don't want to be in that world. That concealment, that hiding of who you are and those issues that potentially could affect how you do your job creates a sense of vulnerability. I'm not saying you should lay on a couch and be a psychiatrist, be it like on a psychiatrist's meeting where you're displaying yourself out there. But I'm very clear with my, with my people that these are issues that I have, that I'm not the most social guy. So don't take offense to the fact that I might say no to your picnic or even a wedding. <laughs> I'm just not social. 
I can fish all day and I have my friends and I'll talk to people in the store and I'll ask, ask questions. I'm not shy. I just don't feel the need to go out and party a lot, go to dinner, I'll go to events, but it's not high on my list of things to do. It has nothing to do with them. The good, the bad, and the ugly, except who you are, face your faults. I don't know if that's a fault, but the point is, is empower yourself by being vulnerable and letting people know that those are issues. And why is that important? I'm going to tell you why it's important. Because a good leader has flaws. Right? They accept themselves for who they are. And why is that important? Because it, it means you have more to offer. Because you're honest and open, even about yourself. So all of that wisdom that you're providing your salespeople comes from experiences. Like, I have a really good knack for reading situations. I have a good, I can go into a situation, I can tell people what's going to happen before it happens. I tell my clients all the time, this is what they're going to say, this is how it's going to happen, and this is what's going to happen next. And they're shocked when it, it plays out. I don't know, it just works for me. I think a lot of it has to do with that dyslexia. A lot of it has to do with my critical thinking. A lot of it has to do with how I have to think strategically because I think differently than, than other folks as a direct result of that problem. So that puts me in a position where I have more to offer. My wisdom comes from my experiences, some of them the good, some of them the bad, some of them the ugly. I was never the biggest guy. In my, I was always the shortest kid in my class. And I played some tough sports. I played rugby. Smallest guy on the field. Every time, hands down. And I dealt with it. Because those things just didn't affect me. I just figured I had to work harder. Because I had to work harder in school. So I just assumed that everything you have to work twice as hard. So I can provide some additional value. I can empathize with their problems. When there's something going on with them, not everybody learns the same way. So I had this conversation recently with someone about their kid and the cross. We were having the same conversation about dyslexia. And he was saying, she really doesn't do well in school. It's a confidence issue. But when you show her how to do stuff and you do it in, in, in visual ways, she picks up on it. And I said to him right up front, I knew that. I didn't know she had this. Like, I didn't know it was, a, but I knew she needed a little push. She needed to be shown things visually. And when I showed it to her in practice, she picked it up right away and did well in a game. So my understanding of that was able to help somebody. My empathy, I didn't look at that person and say, well, they just aren't really learning because they're not learning the way we teach. By being you, you become a better leader. When you put on a persona that you're somebody else and you try to pretend that nothing ever bothers you then you're not being real and you're not able to provide the kind of leadership that's necessary. So what I mean, what do I mean by that? Well, if you're not willing to open yourself up to, Hey, I, I have these problems and I can empathize with where you are and I can help you get through this. What do you say to the person? I have no empathy for you even though I do, but I don't want to expose myself, that's terrible. Once you open that up, you can offer way more to people. Now, I'm not going to tell you everything that's wrong with me because the list is fairly long. I'm not sure people really care about some of those things, but the things that affect their job and affect how I act and interact, I think they'd want to know that. You know? So being you requires a ton, I almost cursed, a ton less energy than being somebody else. Okay? So when I say relieve the burden, I really do mean relieve the burden. Stop being someone else. Empower yourself. Drop the inauthenticity. I can't help but be who I'm going to be in those situations. It's natural for me, but it's not natural for other people. There are people you just don't know. Managers. So if you can put yourself in a position where you're, you're more authentic and you drop the facade or the persona, 
want to say you just start crying in the middle of a meeting. If, if that works for you, I, I don't know. Like I look at them, like I'm able to look at people who are who come into my office and are emotional, and that's it's really across the spectrum, men, women. Some people are more emotional than others. It, what's what's causing that emotion? Somebody pounds their fist on the table versus somebody who cries. They're really in an emotional state over something similar, but they're expressing it differently. And I feel like I can empathize with that based on some of the things I've been through, and I can talk to them about how I manage those situations and about how I can help them get through that as a sales manager. And I tell you where it really is beneficial. Make no mistake about it. In a sales situation with a prospect, it helps you read the room. It helps you understand each and every person's pain point. You walk in that prospect's shoes, in the role in their company, the position they play at in this sales opportunity, the problems that they're having, not only externally, but internally, and it changes everything. So it's not just in dealing in a leadership role with your reps. It's also understanding prospects and teaching your reps how to understand themselves so they can understand the prospect. This is a deep topic, but I just thought it was one that is, was appropriate based on some discussions I've had recently with some folks. So I thought I'd put it out there. It's not the longest podcast, but I hope you could take something away from that. I'm a little behind in my emails. I plan on getting caught up in the next week. So some of you have sent me emails. Usually I get back within a couple of days, but I'm behind. So early part of the week, I will respond to emails. Send me one on this if you think it was worth something. If you think I'm a knucklehead, send me one on that too. Um, <laughs> it, would, it wouldn't be the first person to say that. Thank you for subscribing to The Funnel. You can find us at lyman-group.com backslash The Funnel. On Facebook, Lyman Group, at Shay John R. is my Twitter. And, of course, I'm on LinkedIn if you want to connect with me. Contact me, jshay at alignment-group.com. Head on to the website. We have some pretty cool stuff there. As always, thank you for subscribing and keep filling the funnel.